Murtala Mohammed opposed the regime of Johnson Agoye Erosi, which took power after a coup cool d'etat on January 15, 1966, carried out mainly by Christian Igbo from the south, in which several northern Nigerian leaders had been killed under gruesome circumstances. Agoye Erosi, as GOC of the Nigerian army, brought normality back to the nation by imprisoning the coup makers and intimidating the federal cabinet into handing over the hands of government to him. However, many Northerners saw this and the reluctance of Hiroshi to persecute the coupists and the fact that the army was purportedly given exceptional privileges to the copies as an indication of Erosi's support for the killings. Consequently, Northern politicians and civil servants mounted pressure upon Northern officers such as Mohammed to avenge the coup. The Nigerian Civil War, also known as the Biafran War, and the Nigerian Biafran War was a civil war in Nigeria fought between the government of Nigeria, headed by General Yakubu Gowon, and the secessionist state of Biafra, led by Lieutenant Colonel Dumegu Ojuko. From 6 July 1967 to 15 January 1970, Biafra represented nationalist aspirations of the Igbo people, whose leadership felt they could no longer coexist with the northern-dominated federal government. The conflict resulted from political, economic, ethnic, cultural, and religious tensions, which preceded the Britain's former decolonization of Nigeria from 1960 to 1963. Immediate causes of the war in 1966 included ethno-religious riots in northern Nigeria, a military coup, a counter coup, and a persecution of Igbo living in northern Nigeria. Control over the lucrative oil production in the Niger Delta also played a vital strategic role. Within a year, the federal government troops surrounded Biafra, capturing coastal oil facilities and the city of Port Harcourt. The block imposed during the ensuring statement led to mass starvation. During the two and a half years of the war, there were about 100,000 of raw military casualties. Minorities in Biafra suffered atrocities at the hands of those fighting for both sides of the conflict. The programs in the North in 1966 were indiscriminately directed against people from Eastern Nigeria. Despite a seemingly natural alliance among those victims of the programs in the North, tensions rose as minorities who had always harbored an interest in having their own state within Nigerian Federation, were suspected of collaborating with federal troops to undermine Biafra. The federal troops were equally capable of this crime. In the Rivers area, ethnic minorities sympathetic to Biafra were killed in the hundreds by federal troops. In Calabar, some 2,000 ethics were also killed by federal troops. Outside of the Biafra, atrocities were recorded against the residents of Asaba in present-day Delta State by both sides of the conflict. Britain had planned 
to maintain and expand its supply of cheap, high-quality oil from Nigeria. Therefore, it plays a high priority on maintenance of oil extraction and refinery operations. The war broke out just a week before the six-day war in the Middle East led to the Suez Canal being blocked, forcing oil tankers from the Middle East to use the long route around the Cape of Good Hope, thereby increasing the cost of Middle Eastern oil. In turn, this increased the importance of Nigerian oil to Britain, which was cheaper than oil from the Persian Gulf. Initially, when it was unclear which side would prevail, Britain took a wait and see approach before deciding decisively for Nigeria. Nigeria had a navy of only six vessels, the largest of which was a frigate, an air force of 76 planes, none of which were fighters or bombers, and an army of 7,000 men with no tanks and a shortage of officers with command experience. True Biafra was likewise, likewise similarly weak. The two sides appeared evenly matched at the beginning of the war, and Nigeria victory was by no means considered preordained. Britain backed the federal government, but when the war broke out, cautioned them not to damage British oil installations in the East. This oil works under the control of Shell BP Petroleum Development Company, jointly owned by Shell and British Petroleum. Controlled 84% of Nigeria's 580,000 barrels per day. Two thirds of this oil came from the Eastern region, and another third from the newly created Midwestern region. Counter coup, which may very well have been in the planning stages. The counter coup led to the installation of Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon as Supreme Commander of the Nigeria Armed Forces. Despite the transigence of Mohammed, who wanted the role of Supreme Commander for himself, however, as Gowon was militarily his senior, and finding a lack of support from the British and American advisors, he caved in. Gawon rewarded him by confirming his ranking. He had been an acting lieutenant colonel till then, and his appointment is better of signals. On 9th August, the Biafran forces moved to the west side into the midwestern of Nigerian region, which is across the Niger River, passing through Benin City, until they were stopped at Ore in Ondo State, just over the state boundary. On 21st August, just 130 miles east of the Nigerian capital of Lagos. The Biafran attack was led by Lieutenant Colonel Banjo, a Yoruba, with the Biafra rank of brigadier. The attack met little resistance, and the Midwest was easily taken over. This was due to the precession arrangement that all soldiers should return to their regions to stop this part of killings, in which Igbo soldiers had been major victims. The Nigerian soldiers who were supposed to defend 
the Midwest states were mostly Midwest Igbo, and while some were in touch with their Eastern counterparts, others resisted. General Gowon responded by asking Colonel Motala Mohammed, who later became head of state in 1975, to form another division, the Second Infantry Division, to expel the Biafrans from the Midwest as well as to defend the west side and attack Biafra from the west as well. At the same time, Gongwon declared total war and announced the federal government would mobilize the entire population of Nigeria for the war effort. From the summer of 1967 to the spring of 1969, the federal army grew from a force of several thousand a force of 200,000 men, organized in three divisions. Biafra began the war with only 240 soldiers at Enugu, which grew to two battalions by August 1967, which soon were expanded into two brigades. The 51st and 52nd, which became the core of the Biafra army, by 1969, the Biafrans were to field 90,000 from into five other manned divisions together with a number of independent units. As Nigerian forces retook the Midwest, the Biafran military administrator declared the Republic of Benin on 19th September, though it, it ceased to exist the next day. The, pre the present country of Benin west of Nigeria was still named Dahomey at that time. Although Bini City was retaken by the Nigerians on 22nd September, the Biafran succeeded in their primary objective by tying down as many Nigerians' federal troops as they could. General Gowon also launched an offensive into Biafra South from the Niger Delta to the Reverend area using the bulk of the Lagos garrison, commander under Colonel Benjamin Adekule, called the Black Scorpion, to form the 3rd Infantry Division, which was later rena renamed as the 3rd Marine Commando. As the war continued, the Nigerian army recruited amongst a wider area, including the Yoruba, the Sekiri, Urubu, Edo, Ijo, etc. The command was divided into brigades with three battalions each. First brigade advanced, one brigade advanced on the Aziz Ogugo, Ogunga, Isuka Road, while second brigade advanced on Aziz Gakem, Obudu, Ogoja Road. By 10th July 1967, it had conquered all its assigned territories. By 12th July, a second brigade had captured Gakem Ogudu, Ogoja, to assist Nigeria. Egypt sent six Illusion 1128 bombers flown by Egyptian air crews. The habit of the Egyptians to bomb Red Cross hospitals together with schools, hospitals, and marketplaces did much to earn Biafra international sympathy. Enugu became the hub of secession and rebellion, and the Nigerian government believed that once Enugu was captured, the drive for secession would end. The plans to conquer Enugu began on 12 September 1967, and by 4th October 1967, the Nigerian army had captured Enugu. Nigerian soldiers under Murtala Mohammed carried out a mass killing of 700 civilians when they captured Asaba on the river Niger. The Nigerians were repulsed three times as they attempted to cross the river Niger during the October, resulting in the loss of thousands of troops, dozens of tanks and equipment. The first attempt by the 2nd Infantry Division on 12 October to cross the Niger from the town of Asaba to the Biafra city of Onisha caused the Nigerian Federal Army over 5,000 soldiers killed, wounded, captured, or missing. 
Operation Tiger Claw, 17 to 20th October 1967, was a military conflict between Nigeria and Biafra military forces. On 17th October 1967, Nigerians invaded Calabar, led by the Black Scorpion, Benjamin Adekunle, while the Biafrans were led by Colonel Ogu Ogi, who was responsible for controlling the area between Calabar and Okbobo. And in garrison, a foreign mercenary, the Biafrans came under immediate fire from the water and the air. For the next two days, Biafra stations and military supplies were bombarded by the Nigerian Air Force. That same link garrison reached Calabar but came under immediate fire by federal troops. By 20 October, garrison force withdrew from the battle while Colonel Ogi officially surrendered to General Adekule. On 19 May 1968, Port Harcourt was captured with the capture of Enugu, Boni, Calabar, and Port Harcourt. The outside world was left in no doubt of the federal supremacy in the war. Biafra propaganda always blamed military defeats on saboteurs within the ranks of the Biafra officer, and both officers and the other ranks were encouraged to denounce suspected saboteurs. Throughout the war, Biafran officers were far more likely to be executed by their own side than by the Federal Army as Sujuku conducted purges and had officers who were merely accused of being saboteurs, taken out and shot. Sujuku did not trust the majority of the former Federal Ibu officers who had relied to Biafra and saw them as potential rivals. Thus, leading to murderous purges that led to most of them being executed. Furthermore, Ojuku needed scapegoats for Biafran's defeat and death was the usual punishment for Biafran officers who lost the battle. Out of a fear of coup, Ojuku created several units such as the S Brigade commanded by himself and the 4th Commando Brigade commanded by the German mercenary Rothsteiner. That existed outside of the regular chain of command. Borrow wrote that Ojuku leadership, especially his frequent executions of his own officers, had a disastrous impact on the morale of the Biafran officers. The executions of officers also made it difficult for the Biafra officer to acquire the necessary experience to conduct military operations successfully, as Baruna noted, the Biafra army lacked both the continuity and cohesion to learn from the war. On 4th October 1967, the Nigerian 2nd Division began bombarding Onisha and continuing the assault for eight days before a time boat armada crossed the Niger River into the city. The occupying Nigerians didn't pursue retreating the Afran soldiers and instead opted to loot and burn the Onisha market to the ground. The Biafran 11th and 18th Battalions, under Major Joseph Achuze and Colonel Asa Musudo, formed a pincer and and Atakunisha from two directions, capturing and killing most Nigerian soldiers. In December 1967, the Nigerian 2nd Division and the 6th Battalion crossed the Niger River at Ida and began making their way towards Onisha. Finally, capturing the city after several attempts, the Nigerian forces now intended to link up 
with the first division at Enogo, with the second division at Onisha. To this end, the Nigeria second division moves out towards Enogo in a long convoy supported by armored cars on the 31st day of March 1968. On 31st March 1968, a convoy consisting of 106 vehicles belonging to the Nigeria 2nd Division transporting 6,000 soldiers, as well as ammo from Onisha to Enugu, was ambushed and disseminated in the town of Abagana by a small unit of Piafran soldiers led by Major Jonathan Uchendo. Homemade Ogonigwe rocket missiles were launched by the Bear France at a tanker truck carrying gasoline, which caused an enormous explosion, destroying many of the convoy's armored vehicles and killing a large number of Nigerian troops. 350 tons of Nigerian army equipment were destroyed or captured by the Bear France troops after the rocket attacked the Bear France soldiers open fire on the convoy with small arms fire killing many more Nigerian soldiers. The successful ambush at Abagana gave both the Afran soldiers and civilians hope in the war as well as temporary halting the Nigeria advance into Biafra territory. General Mortola Mohammed was relieved of his command and never commanded the division again. In his own words, Uchendu said the sight of the convoy almost paralyzed his troops. His boys were so anxious to start firing, more out of panic than anything else. He asked them to remain calm until he gave the command. He allowed many of the Nigerian two division convoy pass through. His boys were shocked why he would allow them go through into Biafra head zone. They were nervous, suspicious, yet they trusted his military gallantry and so awaited to know his strategy. He said they concluded that the war was over, but as brave soldiers, he must fight to the last. As he was guiding the soldier with the rocket launcher on what to do to the evading convoy and went best to strike, the soldier nervously and accidentally pressed the trigger, letting go the rocket. Luckily, he hit a target, a fuel tanker. The tanker exploded and threw its contents onto a nearby armor carrier setting everything ablaze. The multiple explosion commenced. In panic, soldiers who already crossed over into Biafra line ran in different directions, in total confusion. Biafra soldiers attacked. They radioed the regular troops and they joined in the attack. When in charge learned that the Murutala Mohammed was with the convoy and somewhere in no fear, he set off hurriedly to capture him, but was late as Motala was sighted taking off with the helicopter. The 1966 anti-Igbo program was a series of massacres committed against Igbo people and other people of southern Nigeria origin living in the northern area, starting in May 1966 and reaching a peak after 29 September 1966. Between 8,000 and 30,000 Igbos 
and Easterners have been estimated to have been killed. The further 1 million Igbos fled the northern region into the east. In response to the killings, some northerners were massacred in Portacot and other eastern cities. These events led to the secession of the eastern Nigeria region and the declaration of the Republic of Biafra, which ultimately led to the Niger-Biafra War.